Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you to all the new subscribers, the old ones. <clears throat> I'm super appreciative of every single one of you. I wanted to cover another natural topic right quick. Um, it's easy for me to talk about that doesn't require, hi Kumba, see? Um, doesn't require a whole bunch of research. <clears throat> I have videos coming up that Yusuf has suggested on parasites, viruses, and microbes. I have another suggestion from Strawberry Lemonade on the hypocrisy of pedophiles and maulings and how it's hard for you to sit there and say that, you know, you're worried about pedophiles and carry on about that, which obviously they're bad, right? But then you're suddenly turning a blind eye to children being mauled by dogs. Um, why is that so looked over? And they're both extremely terrible and need to be addressed. As someone said that was like, you know, that you should be focusing on pedophiles or rapists. So these are covered topics that are widely understood to be negative and that people understand to be bad. You don't have to convince people that these things are bad, but you do have to convince people that there's a downside and negative side to dogs. Okay, so that's why this is part of the um, passion and, you know, the drive for me to talk about this so much. <clears throat> Um, I also have suggestions coming up from II. We're still going to talk about the milkweed thing. It's another unrelated topic. I really do want to talk about that and have it understood, you know, about pollinators and encourage you guys to plant wildflowers and anything to help our pollinators make it. They need food. They're dying off. We need these things. Without them, we are going to die. <clears throat> um, Diana also gave me... Um, at Queen Cat um, Shelter Dog Behavior Review and it's an article and a video from dogsbite.org I'm still working on that and um, uh, and also another suggestion from Strawberry Lemonade that I already had on the list myself pedophiles using dogs to lure children and all very real topics today I'm going to cover something um, dear and well known to me it's natural and simple for me to talk about <clears throat> and this is the barbaric ritual of training animals okay and the godlike presence we feel that we have that gives us the audacity and the thought process that we sh that it's okay to do this crap you know the amount of work it takes to make these critters do this kind of stuff people don't really understand <clears throat> let's start with a dog or let's start with an animal that's not hey, hey. Shh, shh, shh. thank you let's start with something um, unrelated to dogs something you guys may all know about the training of elephants elephants don't do all these tricks people see naturally this is not something you can teach them to do with snacks okay none of that they have to be tortured and beaten to do so there is a movie called earthlings I don't usually say the name of that movie out loud because I need to give you a huge disclaimer here. It is a messed up movie. Um, it changed a lot of things in my life. I cried multiple times during that film. I've never watched it a second time. It's a very deep look into some of the things that happened to these critters that we all claim to love so much. So let's start with elephants. They use bull hooks to make the elephants do stuff and it's, it starts way before that. Since they're young, they take them away from their mothers and they strap them down. And you can look all this up. This isn't shit that I'm making up. This is real stuff. They tie them down to the ground, um, different ropes and pulleys around the neck, face down to the ground, legs stretched out, tie them down. They poke, stab, prod, starve them okay so they finally let them out and go to feed them and they start teaching them tricks if they don't perform the trick they are tied up and punished again the elephant is very smart so after two three times of this they realize that they're going to be punished if they don't perform the trick this is exactly what the human wants now these critters are large so they use the bull hook a bull hook is a stick that has one claw coming out and one stab so that it's like this okay and this hook is for grabbing behind the sensitive ears and around the throat 
and they do it near the legs. So when you see like an elephant that's lifting up its legs and putting them up on a little um, stool, they've used the bull hook to grab the sensitive part of the leg and then they put it up on the stool. If the elephant fights them and doesn't want to do it, they get tied down, starved, and beaten again. And this is repeated over and over and over until the elephant does all kinds of things that are not natural for it to be doing, that it has been forced and tortured into learning these tricks. That's why elephants often spaz out and kill a bunch of people. Um, there are lots of stories about this, but one of the most covered ones was Tyke the Elephant. Honey, shh, was Tyke the Elephant. And this was years and years back. This, el this elephant <clears throat> freaked out escaped a circus and you got to think of the years and they even tracked this elephant's history and knew that it was pulled away from its mother um they experienced ptsd elephants have funerals several days long they have funerals for the lost family members they have matriarchs they travel the same routes they're deeply emotional and intelligent creatures and they're just treated like garbage that's one critter let's talk about dolphins and whales Okay, first of all, they don't belong in these big chlorine tanks, right? But we, playing God, think it's entertaining. We think it's cool. And can't you just appreciate these creatures from far away, the majesty? Whales and dolphins share some similarities. That whales live in massive pods and they stay together for their entire lives. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents, they all travel and stay together. It's a fact that when a certain whale named Tilikum, he's finally died, thank goodness, he lived a terrible life, his pod would regularly come and check out like the ocean around SeaWorld San Diego, okay, waiting for him. This is not an unusual thing, they do it a lot, and uh, they usually go to areas that they've been outlawed in a lot of areas, but they've gone out into the um, <clears throat> different seas and sounds and areas across the country and have been banned and kicked out of many of them. Some of them that you'd be surprised to actually know about, okay, because company and I could hear something getting smacked around. <clears throat> um, these are highly emotional creatures. Whales have a whole section of their brain that's don't, uh, dedicated to nothing but emotions. They feel things and operate in a way that we puny minded humans and not being insulting will never be able to understand. Um, and our answer to that is to put them in chlorinated pools. We constantly <clears throat> put them into pods and make pods of different whales from all over the country in different areas that don't belong together and they will always beat up on each other. They have PTSD. They've been known to slam their heads into the walls and kill themselves just to get out of there. They don't want to live there anymore and that's one of the reasons why they attack so many people. They snap, you know. Dolphins the same way. They travel in beautiful pods of families, family members, and deep emotional connections with one another. And we show up and capture them, haul them off, put them in these chlorinated tanks, and put them on display. And they tell all kinds of lies, and this is all in the sake of conservation. That's bullshit, and we all know it, okay? This is bullshit. Um, let's move on to um, how they're trained. They are also starved, okay? They're told to perform the trick over and over again. And starvation's a big one with whales, okay? Because they do use a few like abuse tactics, but whales are quite large, right? You can't like get in there and be punching him and hitting him with a bull hook and stuff. Not exactly the same thing. And they're waterborne too. If you have like an elephant, you can teach them from when they're real tiny. They go for that with these whales too. Like for example, use one as Tilikum captured when he was very young and they just use starvation tactics and they keep showing him what the trick is. And if he doesn't do the trick, he does not get rewarded. And they learn pretty quickly, well, they're gonna starve me if I don't do this flop and jump into the pool and perform bread and circuses for these people, right? And so they learn that. And at nighttime, they get locked up in small concrete cells, barely any water. 
and when they're not performing they're in these same cells so they just sit there depressed out of their freaking minds and it's uh, terrible so let's go from that to horse breaking and we'll jump into dogs with a horse there's breaking and there's gentling all right when you break a critter like they do with horses one of the tactics they like to use is uh, they'll take a tire and tie it to a corral wall. You run a rope through it. A lot of times they have a hook or a pulley in there. And then that gets attached to the horse, sometimes through the chest. Honey, shh. Man, everybody's determined to keep interrupting me on this. Sometimes around the reins of the head, they go for places that they won't end up like snapping their neck. So most times it's on across the chest um, and through like a big steel ring and what happens is is they and they starve them you're gonna hear that over and over again then they get behind the horse and they beat it and it attempts to get away from you so it lurches forward it hits the tire that throws it backward and you just keep beating the shit out of it and break its will okay now once you've done that and they're hungry and weak and they're afraid of you right you go start climbing on the horse it keeps throwing you. Some of them give up rather quick. They figured out that you're pretty evil and you're not gonna stop. You've scared the shit out of them, especially if they're young. It's much harder with older horses, especially ones captured in the wild, okay? But if you have a horse that you bred or bought from someone that has bred it, it's a little bit easier, but the tactics are the same, okay? And there are many, many other ways of doing this, but literally I could make, because what I know about horses, hours long videos about this practice and so I'm just gonna keep it kind of standard with each critter I could go into bear and all kinds of things these critters don't work for us willingly it takes abuse damage um, starvation bribery threats 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 that's how it works they think that you're insane and that you're gonna hurt them and you bend their will and so it's called breaking yeah. You know you lose their spirit when you do that so you'll see their eyes change it goes from this critter that is like kind of full of wonder and looking around and happy to suddenly sullen the eyes look dark and lacking life they lose their spirit then you can gentle a horse this is harder on the human obviously than the horse there is no starving there's no beatings there's no none of that a lot of it's like spiked uh, whips and smacking things also if you don't know Tennessee walking horses they don't lift their legs like that because they're bred that way. A lot of people think that. It's a procedure called soaring, okay? They put a ring across the horse's neck with the bridles, or the uh, harness, right? And the rope has, goes. it's a leather strap, sometimes I've seen rope, and it's only long enough for the horse to lift one hoof at a time because if they push this hoof down, the rope brings this one, vice versa. And that, no joke, look this up. They use an acid mixture to soar the hooves, okay? Oh, cool. Okay, go. I don't know what you're talking about yet, so I'm gonna have to help you in a minute. Um, so it burns and the horse will start high step and they're trying to escape the pain. And they also are being trained because they have no choice but to do that, right? So they just keep up at that. And by the time the soaring procedure is over, that's how the horse walks. And people desire this. They don't care what it takes to make the horse do that. There was a certain point that they realized, you know, that it was more effective to use the acid mixture to get the horse to try. It's trying to escape its own damn feet. Keep it real. That's exactly what's happening. So pretty barbaric, right? So let's get into gentling. I, I backtracked a little bit. I apologize. <clears throat> In this case, you don't starve the horse. None of that. You come up to it, you keep working with it, you put the saddle on it, and it takes a lot of like, you know, you've got the horse there, you just keep putting a saddle pad on its back, and it's gonna jump and like run this and unnatural feeling, and you just keep it that for days and days and days and days. Then you go for the headgear, and you start teaching them to wear their bit or their martingale, whatever it is you're choosing. Um, once again, bits are far more popular with people because go through the mouth, and you force the critter, it's the sensitive, inners of the gums and the lips that cause the horse to listen to what you're saying because you're fucking jerking them around. Now, a proper rider can use a bit and not sour the horse's mouth and cause damage, okay? So don't get it faded. I've used a couple bits. I'm more of a martingale girl, but I've gentled my own horses 
and they allow me to do what I'm doing. It is a mutual respect and understanding of one another rather than, you know, when I was young, I learned to break. So it was, you know, from when I was young that abusing these things is completely normal. And I didn't know any, I didn't know that there were other ways. So I just was flogging and beating the shit out of these things from like a little kid. They were teaching us how to do that kind of stuff when really they can be gentle. Daddy. It's a lot more work on the human. Like I said, and you get hurt. They're always sidestepping, jumping, getting spooked. It's dangerous to take, you know, a thousand pound critter and teach it how to let you just climb on its back, right? Which is the opposite of what's natural to them because predators jump on their back to go for the neck. You know, they either come up from the side here in the front or right onto the back. So it takes a lot of trust and a lot of time to not abuse and beat an animal and then teach it that that's what you're gonna do. So let's get off the topic with these other critters. I just wanted to use these as examples to show that this domestication shit is wrong and they're not like on board. They have to be taught. So to the dog, we all know from talking about this and reading that these things have to be trained to be less dangerous, right? And as Jamie said the other day, and I want to back back into that, the best dog around is one that doesn't trust you. You're supposed to be the crazy one where we know they're unpredictable and we don't trust them. The only dogs that are worth having around, and this is my opinion, I'm just talking, okay, is are the ones that think that you're the scary one because then they're less likely to attack or harm. They think you're going to attack and harm. But that's how all this came to be as they slowly bred down the dog off of the wolf and started making it a companion animal and they take away all its natural thoughts, instincts. Starvation is used and the dog is food driven. So after you starve certain breeds of dogs and keep breeding them with humans and then starving them intermittently, they start to learn that they have to bend to your will to get the food. Okay, Fluffy will do whatever you ask it to at that point to make sure that it's being fed. They are very food driven, okay? You have to breed the predator out of them. And then you also have to kind of like, people don't really understand this, especially with like hardcore breeds of dogs, pit bulls, bulldogs, Rottweilers, German shepherds, huskies. These things have to be repeatedly abused. Now, it doesn't mean that like, okay, you go buy a husky tomorrow, right? It doesn't mean like that husky was trained like that. Don't get it wrong. We're talking generations ago when it first happened. These things had to be beaten into submission, starved, and trained. They trained them to not do everything they want and naturally do. Which once again always takes us back to like, you know, you're not really an animal lover if you support this kind of stuff. You're just supporting abuse and enslavement, right? So... Now we've got these dogs and we're like, oh, he digs in the trash. That's not, I, it's gotta stop. Well, they're scavengers. They dig through the trash. Oh, he pisses all over everything and scent marks all over. Well, they're supposed to do that. They scent mark for territory, okay? He barks and howls. Well, they're, they're dogs. That's what they do. They bark and howl, you know? Um, he digs holes all over my yard and destroys my garden. Well, they're destructive and they dig holes in the wild. You know, it's just, uh, it's pretty wild. You know, that these people claim to love these things so much, but they know so little about them. And um, Diana sent me an article earlier about, um, you know, basically like the responsible, normal, common sense dog breeder is being like, our dog owner is being like weeded out you know, um, because now we no longer have like Fluffy in the backyard and if Fluffy bites someone, we put a bullet in his head and nobody argues about it, it's very simple. We now live in a world where guy lays down rubber spike mat and gets vilified by everyone in his neighborhood and treated like garbage. But because those people are pussies, they won't talk to this certain, this gentleman about that. They just could take to their keyboards and go start talking shit with each other. So, you know, I, like I said, I could go on about this forever try to keep the videos in around 20 minutes it's just a little more digestible and like I said up until there are more subscribers and stuff we're just gonna take it easy and guys can I just cover something you guys keep asking me about in the comments I've never kicked a man in the nuts okay I've never had to I use my fists I fight um, if anything I would use a weapon if I've had to I've you know picked up a rock or this and that I've been attacked by a few men 
and I've never had to kick one in the nuts. Not that there is anything wrong with that, but you know what is wrong with it is it seems these days, um, and I'm not talking smack, but it's a fetish thing and most dudes want you to kick. I've been asked repeatedly to hit men in the balls. I'm kind of dominant and so they think like, hey, there's the chick, you know, go ask her to hit me in the nuts. They're way into it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging. Uh, as long as you're not hurting anyone else around you, you can do whatever you like, you know, sexually and stuff, and that's fine. Um, but no, I'm not going to hit you in the nuts. No, I've not hit a man in the nuts. Um, I'm not judging. I'm a weirdo too. I like weird stuff. It just doesn't happen to be that. Okay, so um, <laughs> if <laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> I <laughs> a lot of guys were watching that video. <laughs> And getting their jollies off on it. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> but I love all of you and I don't care if you like to have your nuts stomped in. I still think you're great as long as you're not fucking around with kids, you know, or owning a dog that's out killing people. You're a friend of Ashley's. And I don't mind. Do what you gotta do. I hope you find what you're looking for, but it ain't me, guys. I'm not gonna hit you in the balls. Uh, so that's I'm sorry. It was so funny. And I've been asked so many times. I just I just had to cover it. I just definitely needed to be talked about. So, uh, from the bottom of my dog-hating heart, I appreciate every damn one of you. Uh, your comments, suggestions, everything just make my day. I've been doing a really good job of keeping up with them. Um, I thought life was falling behind. And then I go look and I was like, oh shit, I'm doing good. I'm keeping up with everything. So now here's another topic that I had suggested, just, you know, done with. So you guys don't forget, steel toe boots, weapons, protect yourself, stand up for yourself, take your planet back, take your rights back, okay? Uh, fuck Fluffy, right? And uh, thank you again. I'll see you guys all tomorrow um, in the next video.